so what is growing on so finally getting you guys the much anticipated follow-up video i think it's kind of much anticipated at least i've had a lot of people asking about it on the centropic system so got jim here today he's leaving for maine in just a couple days i think he's here actually longer than he expected and he's helped me cut the grass again so that's clutch um i did not get a chance to till these rows put down mombasa grass first thing jim said when he got here is like lots of bahia um, when it's wet, the Bahia cuts pretty good, but ideally we'd want this to have all that Mombasa cuts a lot easier, uh, rakes a lot easier, um, breaks down a lot slower in the sun. So that stuff is awesome. Um, everything's pretty much come back. We lost nothing this winter. I know things looked a little bit rough in that video I made you guys, but all the nitrogen fixing trees, all the avocados look good. Um, believe it or not, the cassavas even come back. I mean, look at that beautiful nitrogen fixer. Got our little citrus, Puerto Rican taro, avocado, flamengia, uh, cassava, citrus, taro, pineapple did take a little bit of frost burn, avocado not doing as well as that last one. You can see moringa has a little frost on the, on the top. All the leaves came back here on the bottom. Loquat doing really good and starting to get a couple of weeds in these beds. I think uh, cutting the grass, probably pulling those things out one time will help a lot. All the bananas have come back really well. Obviously, mulberries doing good. Oh, mulberries. Beep. Mulberries for days. So, little mulberry trees putting on. And it is back to life. We've got little Suriname cherries here on the end of the rows. Those weeds are actually cutting better than I expected. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's still pretty lush with the irrigation. So, I mean, the Baha'i is cutting good. Just ain't that much of it to make much mold. Jim just pointed something out, and I guess I should tell you guys, I did actually put a timer back um, on this system over here. I have it running three days a week for 20 minutes a zone. It is two zones, and that water is mostly going to the bed. So I'm trying to put a little bit more, to the, more water to the fruit trees, the taro. I'm sure the grass is getting a little bit of that, but like what Jim said, there's not a ton of biomass coming off from the regular grass. That's what's so nice about that Mombasa. It adds so much bulk to that edge. It keeps that edge in check. It just really seems to break down over time. So definitely probably a good idea to reseed. Yeah, if you can get the timing right on that, I wonder when. Jim, you warming up for Maine? You know it. Whoa. Well, I was looking at last year, I was mowing May 23rd. So only three weeks away from starting to mow there. Oh, it's coming quick, isn't it? It is. I'm looking forward to it. It's getting hot here. Oh, is that a pro tip? Yeah. A little grass wiper? Okay. Yeah. Good to feel tuned up again. <laughs> trim stroke on this half. On the second one? Yeah, because I only you know, cut three quarters of it. Right. Look out, Ginger. You don't want to lose your nose. Oh, that one's Kiki. Who? That's Kiki. Oh, Kiki. Ginger's the other one. Yeah. Kiki's our, uh, our guardian cane corso. Hey, hey. She doing her job? She is doing her job. She's really keeping the moles out. She's um, oh, great. very limited armadillo pressure. I mean, she even chases squirrels. She's caught a squirrel. Oh, wow. She's pretty fast for a That's big dog. fast for a big dog, yeah. We're talking about you, good girl. Hey, get out of here. You don't want to play with it, it's sharp. That is not a toy. Go, go, go. Crazy dog. Little short strokes, huh? Yeah, it's kind of like I do when I'm doing fence lines. It's a great fence line, too. It's been six months? Or since the last time you were last here. Last time he's here. That was it was kind of like finishing the season there, coming hey, here, Jim, doing one thing, and Jim came here when he first got back, and he's coming here when he's leaving. Yeah. Why are we lucky? Still think it's a great idea. I mean, originally this is what I was doing at Lamb Cove. Originally this is what you were doing 15 years ago, Jim. Yeah, I planted them fruit trees on the slope on contour with the grass in between, mowing the grass for the fertility. Uh, funny thing was, all the, the trees died because it got too wet. Oh. It's amazing what a swale can do on clay soil. 
Live and learn. Yeah. There's a pretty cool site now. It's called the Scythe Improvers Forum. The Scythe Improvers, Improvers Forum? Yeah. Nice. So it's getting a lot of Europeans talking about what they're doing. So I'm seeing a lot of other um, scythe makers. There's a guy out in Wisconsin too, Botan Anderson. One Scythe Revolution. One Scythe re Revolution, really? Yeah. yeah. I like that one. Yeah, so yeah. He's got some stuff going on. He's been doing this for about 20 years. Hey, you know we're trying to work here, right? Seriously? So that's the last time this has been cut? Yeah! Well, ain't much growth in the winter. That's what I've always found about Florida. What do you mow in Florida? Nothing. <laughs> Not in the winter time, huh? Yeah, there's nothing growing. You know, I always wanted to try cattails. I think that would work. Growing cattails? Or mowing them, yeah. Oh. Especially in dry season, you walk there. Because I've been mowing like six foot canary grass at the new fields I'm doing up there. Really? Yeah, that's kind of fun. Six foot? Well, yeah, like 12. Yeah, feet. wow. Yeah, it's kind of, you got to kind of get it out of the way in shorter strokes. But it sure adds up with biomass. Kiki, watch out! You're going to get in trouble. We're going to have to put you inside. All right, so something Jim pointed out. The bamboo was not here when he came last, so that's all kind of new. Definitely starting to put off some new shoots. That irrigation's game changer, especially with bamboo. Um, Something he just mentioned I should also bring up. He's running on oatmeal out here. So um, imagine if, and I could go on a tangent about this one too. You guys know how passionate I am about this stuff. But imagine if the lawn care companies of the future, you know, were guys like this that came out and siphed in between your centropic farming rows or inside your permaculture system, you know, and less people actually grew grass because don't even need to go on a, a, a kind of a tangent here about grass, but... We've been working with a client in Crystal River, Homo Sassa now, that's on the um, on the water now for about six months, and been doing biochar applications, compost applications, organic fertilizer, um, compost tea applications, and we've gotten this yard completely off of chemicals. And you know, in the summertime down here, you know, there's supposedly nitrogen bans in some counties, and some counties not. So Pinellas County has a ban, Pasco doesn't. Those guys down in Pinellas drive up to Pasco and buy the product because they legally can and go back and apply it. I mean, it, it's a really a racket. Um, if you live on the water, please, you don't need chemical fertilizers. Um, you know, you don't need to be putting fungicides, insecticides down in your yard. This is what causes a lot of our red tide issues, blue-green allergy issues, a lot of the problems you've seen with our waterways. I mean, are, you know, they have to do with nitrates, whether you want to blame it on big ag, or you want to blame it on septic systems. You know, I believe that HOAs are a huge part of it. Golf courses, you know, there's, there's all different types of contributors, so. You know, chemicals to me are not the future. Um, moving back to a regenerative direction is going to be the future. You know, moving away from these chemicals, learning what they've done to our bodies. Um, we don't know the long-term applications of a lot of this stuff. You know, a lot of this is just starting to come out. So I would be so excited to see something like this, you know, become the future. And, you know, I mean, just even people growing less grass, using less chemicals makes me excited. You know, if you gotta have some grass, fine. Let that native grass grow up, let those weeds grow up, you know, but to have that pretty lawn that has to be green with those pretty lines, um, you know, water is a commodity now. It's traded on the stock market, um, you know, a matter of time before maybe we'll see soil on there too. So, you know, we, we shouldn't be wasting our water to water our green yard that, you know, eventually washing those chemicals down into our aquifer, down into our waterways. So I could do a video just on this topic. I'm going to try to shut up. This is about siphoning. But, uh, you know, just brought that idea up to Jim, and he's like, oh, I've always thought about that. Jim gets it, you know, that is potentially the future, so. Look at this Mombasa. 
All right, I might actually have to get out here and till, pull some weeds and try reseeding a row or two. Why are we breaking a sweat? Not even getting a warm up? No. What? It'll be hot later. Though. This was supposed to get your body ready for Maine, Jim. It will, but it's, well, it's supposed to be warm. She said it smelled like ocean this morning. Is that a good sign? Yeah, it kind of springs in the air when you get them breezes off the water. Okay, exciting. Now, you guys were just in the 20s a couple nights ago, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how it is in Maine. Woo! I still remember we had that 2018, that June 9th frost. So, not that big a hurry, but I got the greenhouses so June 9th frost? Yep. Wow. And then a September 2nd frost. Jeez. Same year, so you got 91 days or something. A growing season? Yeah. It's kind of short. That's why I got the green out. Jim, I'm smelling the stink horn. Yeah? I think so, yeah. That's a good thing. Oh yeah, life. I smell it. We got soil life, huh? Mm-hmm. Get out of here, big girl! trouble right here. You don't have your breakfast yet. What she has for breakfast? Special she hasn't had food. her breakfast. I know. She usually sneaks out before breakfast and then comes back around 10 a.m. hungry and passes out for about four hours. Ah. So it's her daily routine. Still acting like a puppy. Still acting like a puppy. Jim, I was talking about this being the lawn mower in the future. It is. I mean, it runs on oatmeal. You can take care of the blade yourself. You don't need any, you know, equipment repair guy or parts guy. Well, you need a couple stones. So no gasoline want. required runs on oatmeal? Yeah. All right. Manpower. Manpower. Hand tools. I really love hand tools. There's something to be said about them. It really puts you in contact with our engine. You know, if you walk across a piece of land four inches at a time, three times a year, you get to know it pretty darn good. A lot better than you do on that seat of that ZTR. This is true. Come on, big girl. Hey, come here. Good girl. What happened? I forgot to stone it. I wiped it. In many ways of stone, this is the way I do it. Sometimes I knock off the wire edge, sometimes I don't. But you don't do it the same every time, really. No, you know, that wire edge is kind of like a serration. So it can really cut better. Yeah, that's really sharp right now, though. Cutting like butter? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty sharp behind you, grass, and it's cutting really good. The thing most people don't realize is the tool needs to ride on the ground on both forward and backward strokes. Yep. Which is kind of cool because you're not really carrying the whole weight of the tool either. The ground is, you're just swinging it. Once you start the motion, it pretty much carries itself through if the grass is all the same resistance. You know, it's more like a Tai Chi motion than this big work motion that a lot of male mowers have. Women seem to mow a lot better. Really? Oh yeah. Slice Supply had a t-shirt, mow like a girl. Mow like a girl. Instead of okay. mow like a girl. What, men try to uh, maybe oh. use a little too much muscle? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Jim, you look like me, stop yeah, it. And I see the you know, women just kind of looking at it, doing that, and it's cutting twice as much grass, half the effort. Because you can see you can even move it really slow, and it's still cut. Pretty cool that you can just do that. Now you used to put it all on a tarp and use big, big red. How are you moving it out there now? You know what's even better is we got Genie truck. Oh, the little that's Toyota. 99 Toyota Tacoma. Okay, that's the so I can truck. drive. I mean, it's four wheel drive up on you know big wheels, so we go right into the field when it's wet. So it's oh, even see. better no red actually. I oh, mean, red small, got stuck. Right, smaller yeah. um, you know payload, but you know what I can mow in the morning, I can get in there. So that's what I usually do. Yeah, and it was seven acres again. She has down there at Shelly, so I'm going to be starting that again. And 
hopefully that swamp where I mowed this canary grass won't have quite as much fat because you know I said I was mowing you know six foot tall grass but I actually had to use my smallest snap because I was mowing up here because I was standing in thatch that deep wow you know so it's kind of hard but I'm hoping it'll fall down we'll see I would love to get a thick, thick coat of Mombasa. I might have to rent a tiller, Jim. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's all about trying to figure out what this cycle is <clears throat> and then what you're feeding into. You know, it'd be great to have, you know, when the Baha'i ain't growing, if it was growing, but that's the opposite because it's a tropical, I guess. I mean, it might be fun to put like ryegrass in here during the winter. Jim, you have anything vinegar in there? Yep. You do. So you half filled vinegar, it this morning. Half water. Half vinegar, half water to yep. clean the stone. Ooh, I like it when you right after you stone, it sounds like a. I don't know you can hear the good. difference, oh, huh, yeah. Jim? Definitely. Oh, well, that's the first. Uh, Armadillo action I've seen out here. Yeah, I'd be happy. I didn't have hardly any. A little bit of squirrel activity on some cabbage. That was it. I don't have rodent problems. That's good. We'll see this year now that we're going to be going outside the fences at Hope Haven. Um, how good or how much predators stuff we got with uh, the porcupines eat everything. Porcupines? Yeah, I haven't seen this since. Yeah, so I peened it right before I came out here this fall. It's like five months of growth. Right. Five months of no weeding. Kind of tells me why I have a couple of weeds maybe. Right. <laughs> they didn't show up before. They're here now though. Yeah, growing season. But you should see them peanuts out in front in that flower bed. Are they looking great? Oh, they look awesome. Really? Some are sticking up with the peanuts still attached. Really? Yeah. I think that, we'll see how that goes for the summer, but I think it'll be a really attractive out there in the street that they have on that. Sweet potatoes going wild. Heck, I'm almost done. Jim, you make this look easy. It is. Well, oh, maybe for you. It's like you're not even here an hour yet. You're almost done. What's going on? Yeah, that's a good tune. It sure beats a membership to Planet Fitness. <laughs> you're not going to hit LA Fitness when you leave here, Jim? Nope. No Anytime Fitness? Okay. Yeah, this is kind of like mowing fence lines. Fence lines, short little ones. Yeah, they just kind of. But it's so nice because you can go underneath, really low, and it makes no noise. So, a lot of times I'm mowing around pigs and stuff, and they just kind of—they're more curious. They're kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could burn this to the ground, lawn mower, like two inches, an inch, and then seed and then cover it in dirt. So it would come up that way. I think it'd give you a better shot. Um, better than tilling. Tilling's probably my best, right? Tilling, the thing about tilling is you're going to get all the other Stuff. late and weed seed pressure that's not, you know, exposed to sunlight right now. So you're going to add into the mix. So you would burn it? I've never burnt nothing, but I mean, that's what they do with the blueberry fields. I meant just low cut. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that way, I mean, you're just going to stress out the bahia. But the thing is, you know, it'd be ideal to do that in the drought so the behaving and kicking, but you know, the, that's, the other that's stuff right won't now. sprout. Yeah, but the other stuff won't sprout without water either. I know, probably. I know. But I'm watching that black eyed peas. You know, I just mulch, seed them black eyed peas about four times as thick as I ever have. And they're coming up so thick, anything that else would sprout, they don't have a chance. But you know, that's your whole idea of, you know, plant, grow the weeds you want, not the ones that come up. 
So this is a weedy mess. Yeah. Some of the worst stuff here. This is kind of like here. bed straw, which we get up there, which kind of gets hard because sometimes it'll, you know, get on the snap and follow through. So you end up, you know, pulling it back and you're carrying it. But. Now what's your spot? Is this where you ran a tiller or something? <laughs> you can tell, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see that's exactly what I'm saying about you're gonna expose all those kind of weeds in these areas. And they aren't there in the Bahia, yeah. So at least you've only got one or two things to deal with there. So what's the best way to get it going? We still haven't figured it out, huh? Nope. I'd have to be here more. Get a nice Because it'll tell you if you just keep hanging out here, but you're too busy. <laughs> Jim's right. Did you hear what he just said? It'd tell you if you just started hanging out here more. Yeah, the land will talk to you. I've seen it again and again. Just give it time. And I had another person come. Oh man, I'm calling you on YouTube. I just bought a house. Oh, can you come and just, you know, tell me what to do? I said, no. You come take and watch the videos. <laughs> no, take some responsibility. Learn your land. You'll know it better than I could ever know it in, you know, six months or a year. You know, where the sun is and I mean you know, designers can kind of think that thing, but they just won't know. The garden fairies want to talk to the people that live there. I mean, that's what I say. Jim, you made that too easy. It is that's easy. It. Yeah, and hardly broke a sweat. I did break a sweat a little. So there's not gonna be much room in here in a couple days, is there? Well, it depends if I get the trailer, but no, I've got about 8,000 onions I gotta get in there. Whoa, so, plus all your gear? Not all that much gear in these days. It's Most mostly the, coming back where I'm hoping to bring all the garlic and the winter squash. Most and, of the tents and campsite stuff. up it's there? It's all up there, yeah, which is great. I'm kind of, even my you know seed starting stuff, blockers, I'm having decide you want them in both places and you don't have to move with them. Nice. So, yeah, it's, it's happening. The peas are up, uh, asparagus is up, so. This is exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to come visit. Yeah. Woohoo. All right, Jim, we're going to get you a follow-up video. What do you think at your place? Mid-July? Oh, when I'm not here. Yeah, when you're not here. That'd be great. That's why you can see what's you going should try, on. You should try it maybe like first of June. See what that, because I think it'll really be lush. You in know? the beginning. Okay. Yeah, because I'm with them sweet potato, or with the uh, peanuts filling in. Okay. I'm worried later in the year they might look like ugly. Four or five weeks. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm I mean, drive by, pull a weed. <laughs> Jim, love you. Safe travels, man. Everybody's going to miss you. We're going to be fiending for Jim for a few months. Come see me. All right, all right. We're coming. All right, quick little follow-up video with Jim. I'm sure you guys enjoyed that. I'm sure you're going to be just chomping at the bit, waiting for me to get up the main. So hold tight. Uh, I think getting Jim here to cut again has inspired me to really maybe do some tilling and probably get that Mombasa in thicker. It cuts a lot better, lasts a lot longer. Um, seeing the weeds that are starting to come up has been just kind of a signal to me it's time to get out there and seed so stay tuned if you guys haven't subscribed yet please go ahead and do so most importantly you know what we do around here pounder